Hello everyone, this is Santosh and welcome to Tech Design. In the last tutorial, we have discussed about complete assembly workbench. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use couplers in the NX assembly. So already regarding the joints, I have explained in the last video. So if you have not checked that video, I will give the link in the description. You can just go there and check out the joints. In NX assembly, in couplers, we have three constraints. One is gear rack and pinion and cable so let's get started with today's video so now the first coupler i'm going to discuss is gear okay so here is the gear command so, be so before going into a gear command so let us see how the assembly looks so now this is the one gear and this is the second gear so whenever we have a gear constraint is provided when you rotate one of the gear the other is going to rotate in a different direction okay so now between this cylinder and this gear we already provided a cylindrical constraint okay so for both of side we have given a cylindrical constraint because it has to rotate along it okay and then there is a block here which is completely fixed you can see here this is completely fixed so now why we are giving gear constraint so suppose if this is rotated we want this also to rotate so now we'll just go to gear command here and in the gear command or in any of the couplers uh, you need to provide a joints instead of giving a component as an input okay so now what i'm going to do is i'll just expand this constraints so either you can just select it from here or you can extract expand this and select it from here so the first coupler i'm going to give it is this one okay so which is selected here you can see and the second one i'm going to select it as from this one okay so now the two joints are given and now we can see the ratio and angle offset is there so ratio is based on your gear dimension so now you can see the both the gears are in the same dimension so i'm going to give it as one suppose if one gear is more than the other so in that case you can change the ratio so now it comes to angle offset so now i'll just fit it to here so now the angle offset is 11 degree so suppose if I make it zero, as you can see here, the teeth are not aligning properly. In order to make them align properly, we have to give the angle offset. In some cases, the zero degree can also work. In some cases, you need to define it. So now if I give it as phi, so you can see it is moved, but it is not engaging properly. So in this case, 11 degree is the proper way. You can see here it is exactly at the center of the particular two teeth so now this works so we'll just click on ok so you can see here this is the symbol which is a gear symbol and now you can see here it is written 1 and 11 which is 1 is nothing but a ratio and 11 is nothing but a offset of angle so now it is time to check our gear so how we are going to check we'll just go to move component and select one comp one gear either it may be this or it may be this so i'm going to select this assembly and now we can just rotate it here so you can see here as soon as i rotate the other gear is also rotating in a opposite direction okay so this way gear command works so the next coupler i'm going to discuss is rack and pinion so now you can see here the rack and pinion assembly is created suppose if this is rotated this has to slide along this path okay so this is our requirement and also we have provided the multiple hinges here so this is the hinge so that it can rotate along this particular center line and then there is a slider so it can be rotated so this has to translate along this direction so it, the slider is given to this block and well as this red component rack okay so now i will just go to the rack and pinion command so here is our command and now you can see the select the linear joint so what we are going to do is we need to select the linear joint so which is our linear joint this is our linear joint because it is translating along this direction and now we have to select the angular joint angular joint is the one which is this one okay so now i am going to select this hinge okay so now you can see the radius so radius is nothing but the distance from this point to this until this rack okay so that is actually 47 mm so i'm going to give it as 47 and distance offset we can keep it as a zero 
and we'll just click OK. And now we'll just go to Move Component and we'll try to move the pinion and according to that our rack is also going to move. So this is the way how it is going to work for rack and pinion coupler. So the next command I am going to discuss about is cable. So as you can see here the cable is the one which when the cable is provided between the two components and if you pull any of the any of the component it has to pull the other component also so this is the setup that we have created and if you go to see here so we have given a slider for this because it has to slide along this direction and as well as the slider over here it has to travel along this direction so that is why the slider is given to these two components okay so now we'll just go to cable and here you can see first linear joint so we can just select this linear joint and the second linear joint is going to be this linear joint so once you create you can see here the cable is created here so now the ratio so suppose what is the ratio like if you are pulling it 1 mm this is also going to 1 mm if the ratio is 1 okay if it is 2 then if you are pulling it 1 mm it is going to move by 2 mm so we can just keep it as it is and the distance of our offset we can just put it as 0 and we'll just click ok so now you can see here this is the constraint that is created ok so in order to check this i'll just go to move component and i'm going to select this component and let us move it by along this direction now as you can see here as soon as we move the bottom component is also moving so this way we can able to create a cable coupler 